With regard, though, to priority based on use, we have this question about what kinds of uses qualify. And so in Section 45 of the Lanham Act, we have a call for a bona fide use of a mark. And that is a use not made simply to reserve rights in the mark, but is rather bona fide. It's in the ordinary course of trade. And the requirement is met under the statute if goods are sold or transported in commerce and the mark is, quote, placed in any manner on the goods or the containers or the displays associated therewith or on the tags or labels affixed thereto, or it's used in associated documents where, place, where such placement on labels is impracticable. Likewise, the requirement is met when your services are rendered in commerce or in multiple jurisdictions, and there's use in display in the sale or advertising of the services. Now, the use requirement for priority is not especially onerous, so long as it's bona fide, that these are not token sales made to preserve a right. The restatement standard is that the use is one that makes the mark known to prospective purchasers in the ordinary course of business. Ornamental uses, though, don't cut it, and they're not supposed to qualify as a trademark use. And if you look at the PTO's publications on this, they say, you know, for, for example, if you were to put your, your suggested mark on the front of a t-shirt, the PTO says most purchasers of the t-shirts would not automatically think the slogan identified the source of the goods, but would view the slogan only as a decoration of the goods. So if you want to, you know, if, if you're trying to get a trademark for merchandise, what you need to do or what you would be advised to do is to put it on the collar tag as well. But if that's all you need to do, what does that say about whether or not there ought to be infringement? What if someone goes around with a t-shirt with the same name emblazoned on their, um, and blazing on the t-shirt. Is it really performing a trademark function? Is it actually going to cause a likelihood of confusion? And that kind of gets us into the realm of the merchandising right. But there was an interesting recent exchange with the trademark office where the, the Ohio State University filed an application for a trademark in the word the, because you know they're always going to the in Ohio State University. Taylor Decker, the Ohio State University. Frank, Frank. And the trademark office made an initial rejection based on ornamentality grounds. And Ohio State is still arguing about this. And there's a parallel proceeding going on involving Mark Jacobs. So it's um, you know, unresolved as of the moment I'm recording this lecture. Now, what about pre-sale activities? And under the restatement, that can qualify as a trademark use if the use is calculated to produce the required association between the mark and the user's goods and is done in the user's ordinary course of business. But it's important to keep in mind, of course, that a use that may be sufficient to confer priority may not rise to the level of a use in commerce sufficient to sustain a trademark registration. And what these pre-sale activities may be capable of doing, though, is getting you priority to the mark, assuming you ultimately have a use in commerce. And that takes us to the FN Herstal versus Clyde Armory case that kind of shows this principle in action. So you look at the activities of FN. In January 2004, there's a solicitation of bids for a new assault rifle for the U.S. military. And there's a reference in the solicitation to SCAR, Special Operation Forces Command Assault Rifle. There's no U.S. government rights in, 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 in the term. FN wins the bid in November of 2004. And they ship rifles branded as SCAR. The name is used in promotional materials using the non-acronym meaning. And between 2005 and 2006, FN begins promoting the rifle to non-military audiences, but there are no sales made, nor is there an available civilian product. And it's not until 2008 that FN has a civilian product under the name SCAR. Meanwhile, Clyde comes along. In April 2006, they select SCAR as the name of their product, in September 2006, they make their first consumer shipment, and in 2007, they're using it as a domain name. So the first sort of traditional use in commerce is made by Clyde, but you can see that FN is the one who is building meaning in the public's mind as to the meaning of the SCAR mark, and so it is that FN prevails. The 11th Circuit test in this case is that what do we want for priority in the mark? And again, as opposed to actual perfection of rights, but simply priority, evidence of adoption and a use sufficiently public to identify and distinguish the good in the public's mind 
even without actual sales. Sales are typical evidence for this, but analogous use like advertising, publicity, and solicitation may be a substitute. And so the result here is FN has priority due to its pre-civilian sale activities. The sales to the military enable public identification, there's military attention, there's marketing at trade shows and promotional goods, and the military sales in the court's eyes are actually enough, but the marketing efforts are enough in the alternative as, an analog as what the court calls an analogous use. And this idea of analogous use also shows up in the practice of the PTO. Section 2D of the Lanham Act bars the registration of a mark that resembles a previously used mark or trade name and one that might cause confusion. And under the interpretations of Section 2D by the Trademark Office, proprietary rights under Section 2D extend beyond trademark rights. And this is interpreted as meaning that prior uses that are analogous or like a trademark or a service mark use may be enough to give priority to get a registration, notwithstanding someone's prior actual sales in commerce. Now, you still, again, have to create a public identification of the term with a product or service. There has to be a substantial impact on the perceptions of potential consumers. And so the TTAB test is things like an open and notorious public use, directed to the purchasing public, and done so as to inform the public of the present or future availability of the service or good under the mark in question. And so those are sort of the basics of priority in the normal case.